you respect somebody is like given to him. We just see him in only one way that is looking for ways to heal the world. I think faith, even if somebody is like can on it, everybody's been born from And that every religious community or ethical. We recognize that in the UK, that faith communities do. Kia ora and welcome to Baha'i On Air. In this episode, we've got a special guest, a young filmmaker, Sonia Sire, and she's made a film about religious tolerance, so we'll be talking to her about that, and we'll talk to her a bit about herself and her journey as a filmmaker who's trying to do something really positive with their work. My mum was doing this amazing community action program, which was uh, run by the Fulbright Commission in America that was started by Senator Fulbright. The Fulbright Commission aims to bring a little more knowledge, reason, and compassion into world affairs, thereby increasing the chance nations will learn, at last, to live in peace and friendship. The first month that I was in America, I was based at the University of California in Santa Barbara. Um, I lived with seven others from uh, different countries around the world that were interfaith activists. We were all sent out on projects. I was sent to Auburn Theological College in New York City, where there's a face-to-face -face interfaith programme for young people. I was kind of going, this is really exciting. It's like, how are people going to hear about this? How is this going to get out to the world? How are we going to know? And she was saying, oh, well, you know, I think there might be some projects when I come back and, and maybe there's going to be an academic book. And of course, my thinking is, who's going to read an academic book? Wonderful, academics will, and they'll be inspired and they'll maybe read and write more. But, you know, back home in the UK, we've got a lot of problems with young people. They're feeling really disassociated from... From, from life and from society and from really engaging with being a good citizen. I've been raised with parents of two religions and um, these two boys who I'm good friends with and I was sitting there one time and they told me I was lost and I have no path and I was struck so hard I had to leave the restaurant just because of this fact that I am no longer respected by my own friends and now this you know lack of faith or religion is just putting me in the middle of nowhere and i think they're not full of hope like i turn on the tv and there's conflict in you know in israel and palestine there's conflict in africa there's loads of terrible breaches of our human rights and so <laughs> after all that, I get on my soapbox and write a proposal for what I would do if I could follow her journey and meet some of these really interesting people. And basically I come up with this idea for Beyond Tolerance, that I'd, I'd, I'd follow her journey and interview as many people on the road who were really actively, positively engaged with religion and, and even the non-religious community in interfaith dialogue and action and trying to make the world a better place. And you said that one of the segments is called Why Value Faith. I think that sounds really important, so tell me about that. Yeah, that, that's right at the beginning. So our introduction is, you know, is this religion thing important to people? Is it kind of outdated? And what we find in America is that no, really, it was still important to so many people. And so some of the young people mention why faith is important to them. Faith is important to me because I think it's one of the things that drives people to do a lot of what they do, make choices in life. Faith itself doesn't have to be religious, and I think many people don't understand that. Um, but if it's going to be religious, or like me, it's just more of an energy, that's fine. But I think, again, it should be for the benefit of others and nothing too negative, nothing to harm others. It gives me a reason to have hope. It's a place people go to find peace within themselves. I think the qualities of questing for meaning and discovering truth is actually a human quality. Whether it's exploring the natural world, you know, through scientific means and trying to establish, you know, how does all this work? And that's also the case, I think, with our inner journeys, you know, that who am I? Why am I here? What's this all about? Is there a God? Is there a purpose to to life is part of who we are as human beings to search for the truth. So what's your prediction for the future? I mean obviously you've got you've seen the real positive side that maybe people will be able to get along and cross this what seems like an incrossable barrier sometimes between people. So you have hope for people working together across religious boundaries? Absolutely. I fundamentally to my core believe that most people want to live happy, peaceful, interesting, fulfilling lives. 
maybe the best way to get started in really trying to open ourselves up to each other and to understand each other might be to start with acting together okay. and becoming religious brothers and sisters together in terms of the common things we're concerned about. People suffering because they don't have enough to eat, a violence, uh, innocent people being killed in war. All of our religious traditions, no matter how different our understanding of God may be, we're concerned about these very real instances of, of suffering. The challenges which may arise are challenges that we as human beings will create. I think that if, if we were to look at the spiritual side of things, there are no challenges. It's when we let our own brains, our own egos get in the way that the challenges are, that they arise. If the focus is one, then those challenges will eventually sort themselves out. We will sort them out. It's not going to be easy, but it's necessary and, and very doable. So many of us incline towards, embrace this world where people from different backgrounds are appreciating one another, are building relationships, are doing activities together. We just have to stand up for that world. And we have to have particularly the language to say, this is what I believe in. And if you're against that, if whoever you are wants to destroy this, then I'm not going to let you win because, because you're destroying something that I love. And I think we just need to harness that, you know. And if we do, and everybody takes those little steps, we're going to be fine.